Hello, welcome everyone to the Distraction Plays TEW. We are here, June week two. It is the go home week for the SmackDown pay per view Judgment Day. I am Jeremy Lambert running Raw, Joseph Holbert running SmackDown. Joe, are you excited to book the final week before the big Judgment Day pay per view? I'm ready for a good time, Jeremy. <laughs> That's what I'm ready for. Biggest week for SmackDown yet. We're still rebuilding after the tragedy of Bruce Pritchard, but we are there now. We're at the point of view. We're coming one more week, and you can bet your bottom dollar that my format is complete. It is ready. <laughs> I am prepared. The biggest week of television I've booked so far. Um, there's just so much good stuff coming. I cannot wait to get to it. I cannot wait, Jeremy. As always with Friday Night Smackdown, I can't wait. Let's get into it then. Uh, it is on me, Monday Night Raw. Here we go. exciting times here oh i thought i clicked the arrow but apparently i didn't i was like why isn't it going anywhere now one thing we can agree on here we don't need any bad news to ruin my big day do we no 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 no. we do not all right locker room incidents hopefully it's just Britt baker and candice LeRae talking about how they're going to rule the division oh no they should be oh there is one of those they're really good friends. It's the third straight week we've had Britt Baker and Candice LeRae just getting This on. could be very, very bad. Jeremy, this, should, this could be real bad for you here. These, these first two ones were terrible. <laughs> we're going to start with uh, LeRae and Baker because we know that's good news. Okay, cool. All right, Sami Zayn and John Laurinaitis. A little bit worried <laughs> about this one. All right, they've bought love of Lego. I This didn't pop up for everybody, but... It looks they, pretty good. <laughs> for a second it said sharing a love of legs and i was gonna say jesus that was straight to the point but lego may be better johnny a is playing with lego in the offices it's one of the best sports ever in the history of the world so john laurinaitis and Sami Zayn have really bonded backstage having discovered a shared love of lego do you watch lego master joseph no, I'm not a Lego guy. I find it fascinating. I've just never been a Lego guy, but I'm happy for Johnny and Sammy. I must say, I really am. Lego Master is amazing. I like. I don't build a lot of Lego. Um, I do it yeah. if if I do have like a, a Carolina Panthers helmet and a Thunder logo that I that I've built. But Lego Master, they build some wild stuff on that show. That like you should get Johnny and Sammy on there as guest stars. <laughs> yes, I agree. Uh, I'm Paul, gonna tell you now, this is gonna be bad. Yeah. This is gonna be real, real bad. Paul Heyman and I think it's Paul Heyman getting brought to wrestlers court. I think that's what it is. That's my guess. Okay. Because Undertaker would be would be the judge. Oh, I gotta click continue. Yep. Paul Heyman was brought to wrestlers court, accused of making a mess backstage and not cleaning it up, annoying everyone else. That sounds about right. Uh, Honestly, the... after watching him eat at Money in the Bank, um, which was 12 years ago, I think <laughs> I believe every bit of this. Yes. I really do. Uh, the judge, the undertaker, found him guilty, sentenced him to clean it up, and then buy drinks for everyone. Ooh, that's coming out of Paulie's pockets, and that's not good. I mean, it's not going to cost that much to buy the New Day, you know, Diet Cokes. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> Paulie has improved his behavior, which is good news. All right, so could have been worse, but the the, the John Laurinaitis, Sami Zayn one really scared me. Fortunately, it was good. Uh, but once I saw Undertaker, I figured it was just uh, a wrestler's court gimmick. See, I think a different story is going to be fed to the Observer, and it's going to be <laughs> that um, Paul Heyman was suggesting that Undertaker should be traded for MVP, and immediately a fight broke out at backstage <laughs> at Monday Night Raw. That's what I think happened. That's my opinion. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> All right. I have no idea what I'm booking for this show. So just warning everybody, as opposed to other weeks when I have an idea what I'm booking for this show. The long builds are tough, right? It because really is. you need is. to keep stuff like back for when the end of the build is, you know? Yeah, it, it really is. I, I have mi some middle stuff. The problem is I know what I'm doing. So so here's what I'm, I'm booking. So people don't think I'm completely crazy and I don't have an idea. So we're going to do a Daniel Bryan, Brock Lesnar match at uh, the Triple H tribute show. And yeah. Because Brian is upset that Brock just walks in, gets a title shot, and all this stuff. The problem is this tribute show is not for another month, so I, I have to continue to build this for a month, and I'm like not going to have Brock wrestle. 
So I'm going to just like book Brian in matches. And, and the gimmick is like Brian just says like, all right, if you want this title shot, you got to beat me. So they do the match. We'll, we'll book the winner and then we'll move on to, to SummerSlam and everything. Um, so, so that's my long-term and by long-term two months, I guess plan for, for the title feud here. Uh, but like, I don't, I'm not having Brock wrestle, so I can't have him on too many shows. So I think what I'm going to do is kind of the same thing as last week. Brian wrestles a match. He wins. He does the promo. And this is where he's going to challenge Brock Lesnar on the show. He's going to challenge Brock to show up, prove his worth, and th- that whole ordeal. That's what he's going to do. And then next week, Brock Lesnar will be on the show to uh, a- 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 confront Daniel Bryan. I have a question that you're not going to be able to answer because it's like – awfully specific about only a three years ago WWE, but I do have to ask it. You know when they brought the brand split back in like 2016, around there? Sure. They were doing two pay-per-views a month, right? I yes. feel like they were doing, they weren't doing the eight-week, six-week build. They were just doing literally just two different pay-per-views every month. Yeah, it was nuts. Yeah, because I was thinking, I don't remember any build of theirs being this long when they were doing this deal, so that makes more sense. I understand that. Daniel but yes, Bryan... this Daniel Bryan stuff is fun. Oh, this is good. I don't think I've used Gargano at all. I hate that he's a heel. I'm going to have to turn him babyface at some point. I got just got to figure out the actual turn because I have no use for him as a heel. He sucks. He was playing video games once. (laughs) He was was in the video game segment. Uh, He's he's terrible as a heel. So, yes, this match would be better with Brian as the heel, wouldn't it? You know, like, yeah. Imagine this match with Brian as the heel being like, oh, naive Johnny's trying to try to get the crowd on his side. It would be wonderful, but that is not the world we live in, unfortunately. We do have time machines, but we do not have um, <laughs> freedom with heel and babyface yet. So we have to get there eventually, I guess. All right, so Brian wins, steal the show. Let, let's just start the, the build towards this Johnny Gargano face turn just so it, it, it gets rated well on segments. B-plus yes. as a heel. That's way too generous. I've got it. I've got the term for you. Okay, Candice LeRae is going to go up to him and do the knuckles deal that she did to the legit <laughs> boss. And she's going to be like, you need to start acting up, pal. And he's just immediately going to turn baby face out of fear. Of I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at that at all. And that would be actual inside baseball where it's a reference <laughs> that makes sense to like 100,000 people. I don't know how many people would even know about this story, but still it's awesome. It makes sense to everybody who watches the product and reads the, I guess, uh, reads the Observer, but yeah. All right. Um... <laughs> We Maybe got... you can do like a simulcast with like dirt sheet happenings on the side of the screen while the show <laughs> takes place. All right. So, so Brian promo again, he cuts the promo that I just explained where he calls out Brock and he says, you know, you come in here, you get a title shot. I'm here beating Johnny Gargano. I'm here beating whoever he beat last week. I already forgot. Uh, but he beat the person last week and I'm going to add Brian to uh, the storyline here because like once we do this Brian and Brock match, this is gonna be an A match, Joseph, because this storyline is gonna be red hot, and it, it, it's Brian and Brock. Like, how's it not gonna be a good match? Yeah, this would be actually good. He beat Andrade last week, okay. right? Yeah, that's a good match too. So yeah, Brian, Brian's like, I'm beating Andrade, I'm beating uh, Gargano. You're you haven't beaten anybody, and then you just come here, you demand a title shot. So come to Monday Night Raw, come face me like a man, and that, that's a, that's. Pretty much the promo there. I mean, this works. This works for me. This is one of those matches. We got this match at Survivor Series, correct? I think. Uh, yeah, long. Brian. Yeah, Brian and Brock. Yeah, Brian was the. That was when he just turned a uh, heel, and people were like, "What's going on?" But then everyone realized uh, Dan and Brian's a great heel as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this was. This is a program they haven't done at least, so this this would be pretty cool. I can't argue with this. All right. So see, I do have a plan for my main event picture, everybody. So just so people know the, the rest stop of the, the hate stuff, folks stop yes. the hate i see the i see the youtube comments everyone saying he doesn't actually have a plan i do the rest of it maybe not so much the main event picture i do have a plan i've got to say shout out to the smackdown community in the comments who they've decided they no longer discuss raw in the comments <laughs> and they just they just put on the video and they're like wow another great week for the blue brand and then they just leave it there but shout out to those guys by the way i those people are, are fine the people that i have an issue with are the ones who like try to bury my product and when raw is a better show or when raw gets a better rating they're like yeah but smackdown was a better show like what are you yeah. talking about raw is always the better show that's why it gets the better rating but these people are just like oh well, smackdown is just the better show i should have explained this to you a while ago so my show opens with like a blank canvas 
and it you know uh, all these amazing images come up of WWE history and then it comes up wrestling is art and then that's why <laughs> we don't pay attention to the ratings we've made that clear it's in canon so that's why it is that way Jeremy just to make it clear um, we're gonna have a, a uh, brain busters promo and basically what they're gonna say is like AJ Styles Mr. Perfect for some reason they got a title shot because they they won a match all these thrown together teams just come in getting title shots he's like we're we're a real tag team brought back from the past or something i i don't have a thing where i can explain that they're out of retirement like arn anderson is like 50 years old and and tolly blanchard's not doing much better um so yeah i don't i don't have anything they're just dropped into the storyline here of of who they are uh but yeah they're they're tired of people getting opportunities that don't deserve opportunities is basically what this comes down to this makes sense and i like it but i must admit i did enjoy the line of those guys got a title shot because they won a match (laughs) like it was some absolute blasphemous crime give it to the guys who lost the match damn it at least they're a team they weren't a team that they beat though. They beat uh, Balor and Black. That wasn't a team either. This is their issue. Is like they, they just it's these thrown together tag teams beating each other, and oh, you get a title shot because you know you have named that your former champions. AJ Styles a former world champion, so we're gonna get, no. It's like this is real tag team wrestling. You know we respect that, and we want the tag teams to get the opportunity. It's basically just the revival fantasy booking all of this. Okay, but in fairness. Considering your plans for Finn and Alistair Black, they're definitely going to end up being a tag team. They just they are. They've got excellent chemistry. They did have, have excellent no chemistry. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we need Renee in this segment. They're they're, they're backstage talking to uh, the great Renee Young. Yes. You, um, Renee has she been used a lot? For uh, Renee or she... I, I think I've had her. I don't think I've booked her the past couple of weeks, but uh, yeah. She hasn't been used How does she much. feel about AEW being slandered on WWE backstage, her own program? That means <laughs> that thing must have been a bit awkward. Uh, she, she, she's fine with it. She understands. It's business. It was a Fox she call, not a Moxley. WWE call. And she was saying to Moxley, she was like, look, we don't pull any punches on our show. Okay? And <laughs> exactly. here's what it is. We, we shoot straight. Just got to do it. Got to do with it. Okay? That's the way it is. Look, Renee apparently caught heat for that Moxley appearance that one time. So this was the payback. <laughs> Well, wow, extraordinary fault. That that is amazing. But yes, carry on with Monday Night Raw. Um, all right, what else are we doing here? Okay, we're we're gonna do two smokes again. 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 Are they gonna win? No, are they gonna win they're here? They're not gonna win. They're not uh, gonna win. I'm sorry. They're gonna lose. Um, I don't I don't know who who's actually gonna gonna beat them. Have I done the? I mean, I guess I could just like throw new era whichever murphy adam cole and murphy that's a team right that's a good team lots of fire slaps in that team there um but it's a good team nonetheless i guess they didn't malcolm didn't convince them did he he no, just no, was no, tell- no. yeah he, he was just telling him he didn't convince him to put down the smoke he was just telling him yes yeah, yeah. slow build that's right look i got to four weeks now still to build towards this pay-per-view <laughs> i can't just be giving it all away all right adam cole Okay, so we're good there. After the match, Sami Zayn, very impressed. That's that's the title, Sami Impressed. I love the idea of Sami. It's like, like, you're framing Sami like he's like this old legend. This is so yes. great to me. I love it. <laughs> it's weird. Like, Sami's great as a heel. He's another guy who I would have an easier time probably booking as a babyface because yeah. he's just such a great underdog babyface. But... I'm going to do that with Gargano. I kind of already had that with Brian. Um, even Brett is kind of like underdog, at least against Brock, like almost underdog baby face. So I I have no issue like being, you know, Sami Zayn just playing his current heel character because he is great in that role. But yeah, he, he is. He's a, he's a main roster legend compared to these other guys who haven't been here very long. <laughs> I would. I always think the best way to explain it is like Sammy as a heel equals good television, but as a babyface, it's a lot easier to see his top matches, isn't it? Like, right. As a babyface, you can book him against basically anyone, and you can tell a good story because he's a clear in ring character. Whereas as the heel, he's just he's good TV, and that's about it. That's that's fine, I guess. But it's harder to figure out on a roster like this, definitely. Right. All right. Um. So Sammy's impressed. And then we got Bivens. He's backstage with a. Uh... 
Riddle and Dunn. Once again, telling him, you guys got to put down the smoke. Pete Dunn already coming around. He, he's kind of agreeing. He's like, I get this. I'm here to beat people up. Not, you know, not smoke and do all that stuff. I'm not for that. But Pete Dunn really loves Matt Riddle. Bros are weights, all that fun stuff. Uh, so he, he knows Matt Riddle a little bit better. Riddle's told him some stuff about Bivens. Uh, you know, people don't like Malcolm Bivens for some reason. He's a very entertaining guy, but he's he's got a reputation. Yeah, I mean, I wonder if he does this often in real life or if it's just a, just a Monday Night Raw thing. I hope he doesn't just walk around sort of local <laughs> areas going up and lecturing them about where their lives are at. I mean, it's different in the world of professional wrestling, though, certainly. I'm, I'm actually on Malcolm's side, I think, here, Jeremy, I must say. I think uh, I am. I am not. I say let people enjoy uh, whatever they want to enjoy. <laughs> but what if you're taking on teams from Time Machine <laughs> and one, one of you is actually from a Time Machine himself? My God. <laughs> Different ball game. All right. Um, got that. We we've got uh, who who was who was impressive in NXT this past week? Who was it? Um. Oh my goodness, I can't remember. Oh, Jordan Devlin. Jordan Devlin. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We gotta we gotta call but him. But he's up. gonna be. He may be an NXT UK guy that's like on paper. I don't know if you can call him up. I'm not sure. Oh, no. I don't know. Not good. Oh, that's very sad. All right, we've got to find somebody else now. Um, I must say, I think you're missing out here on not doing a Lego segment with John Laurinaitis. <laughs> uh, Welcome no. to Laurinaitis Lego. <laughs> All time segments they would be. Uh, Walter is going to to beat Mojo Rawley, right? Mo- Mojo sure. Rawley. Yeah. Poor Mojo. That Gronk deal just didn't work out for him. Huh? No, no. Again, Seth Rollins is coming out. Rollins is like, all right, bring him out. It's the same gimmick we've been doing for weeks now. <laughs> Nobody's <laughs> sick of it yet. <laughs> That's amazing. Actually, we're just going to put Rollins on commentary. He doesn't need to do a damn promo this week. Does he wear one glove again for commentary? <laughs> he, he only has one glove. Like, that's it. Like, he's just lost the second one. Wow, talk about layers. That's next level, <laughs> isn't it? That's what I should have booked, is just Walter stole his glove. That's the way a feud starts. <laughs> Walter is... Can we see the, the screen where it says... I don't know if it would show for the audience anyway, but at some point, can we just see the screen where it like shows the development of openness? You know, where it has like the oh, where yeah. it was in one month? Yeah, I'll Because he that. is killing guys here. Uh, yeah, he's running through all of NXT. He's running through the guys 600,000 people watch every week. Uh, I Indeed, don't. I don't think this is gonna show on the people, f- the screen for the people, because I have. Actually, we'll do it after. That way, the people can see it as well. Yes, okay. that's fine. Yeah, I, I just think it was an interesting bit of track because he's gonna murder Seth Rollins very soon. So I just wanted to yes. see where he's at. All right. Uh, so, so Walter, I did put Rollins on commentary, right? This will be the storytelling match because whatever. Yeah, Rollins is on commentary. I love that all these jobs are like they're one minute jobs too, right? He's not like doing no. anything extended. He's just murdering. Them. Yeah. It's one minute. That's it. All right. Uh, Asuka and Bailey set up last week in that segment that I did that I remember. A main event on any takeover across the world. That's very true. Very true. NXT icons, Asuka and Bailey. That's how I'd advertise it. Uh, Asuka and Bailey. Uh, Asuka is, is going to win because I don't have quite as big plans for Bailey. And couldn't see that coming those lack of plans for bailey couldn't that, see those coming. That, that's that's pretty much it uh oscar just wins have you thought about giving that match 45 minutes instead to celebrate <laughs> their nxt rivalry i was just wondering i've not and i'm not going to do that <laughs> um now once again it's it's the same thing it's all 50 50 booking to come ahead to this uh this uh, tag team clash that I wish I had a pay-per-view that I could put it on, but you're going to get it for free next week on raw. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the Kabuki warriors against the boss and hug connection. Yeah. So the boss and hug connection, is that still a team name or are we just like, you know, living in the past here, Jeremy? Cause she doesn't hug anymore. Does she? No, but I don't, what, what are you calling them? The boss and role model connection. Um, the greatest tag team in the history of wrestling. <laughs> is what I would probably work with. That's what I seem to see on the socials. That's what I'd probably go as a name, but I get All what right. you're saying. All right. Uh, so, so same thing here. 
Asuka and Kyrie. I don't remember what this segment did last week, but it did good. But it may have been because Britt was looking over them. I don't yeah. know. Bailey. Oh yeah, I've got it. So you know like they're the world's greatest tag team, Hass and Benjamin were, right? <laughs> right. They can be they can be Twitter's greatest tag team. <laughs> You could, they could have like the Twitter, the the icon on there, like gear and stuff. It'd be great. This is what you should go with. I'm, I, I may even loan you Bliss Cross at all sorts to beat them on a show. <laughs> if you if you're nice to me, I may even do that. Dare I say? All right, we've got that. Uh, we're gonna do, we're gonna do a, a essentially a dueling video package thing here. And what this is is Nakamura is gonna highlight uh, Nak America. And then Braun Strowman is doing this video of why Nakamura Nak America is bad, and Braun Strowman, he's—I was gonna say—he's gonna make America great again. I don't know if I'm gonna go full bore of MAGA Braun Strowman, uh, I, but that—that's the thats essentially what it is, everybody. But that's not what it is. You know, I was about to say <laughs> when you was mapping this out, I was gonna say you need to be careful with the undertones here, and you went with your next line was. <laughs> I'm not going to say make America great. And I was like, okay, he's not going to be careful. Like, or maybe he is. I don't know. I don't know what this looks like, but it's certainly something. It is. Uh, all right. So, so Strowman, that, that's what this video is though, but that, that's not what this video is. <laughs> that's what this video is though, but that is not what this video is, is the best quote to come from this program thus far. And this is a program that has given you Sami Zayn and John and I to share a love of Lego. <laughs> All right, so we got Strowman Nakamura video. We're good there. And we're running through this show. I feel like I've got a lot of good stuff, and I still have people I don't know what I'm doing anything with. Um, yeah, this feels like a little bit of a slog for you, Jeremy. I must, this feels a little bit like, you know, this is a week you just want to get past this week. I mean, we're, we're setting up things. This, the, this really is the problem of these, like, long builds is coming up with, like, delaying this stuff for a pay-per-view. Yes. Like, I, I would just, it'd be very easy to, like, I don't need six weeks to build Nakamura and Braun Strowman. Like, how much am I supposed to do with that in six weeks? Nakamura is going to kill him in three minutes, and that's the end. It doesn't need a six-week build. But I don't have another, like, great pay-per-view match mapped out. And maybe I, I that's my issue, is I should. Um, but, yeah. Well, the thing is, this, this format is, like, in the middle ground. It isn't the deal where you have only four pay-per-views in a year and you can go full long build, but it also isn't quick enough where you can hit the hit the high notes and get out of there. So you kind of have to drag it out a little bit, but you haven't got enough time to do anything else along the way. It's weird. Right. right. Uh, let's just go ahead and book the, the A segment, Bray Wyatt. So last week, he, he went back to the compound. He saw the Randy Orton cardboard cutout, uh, and he, did, he, he murdered the cutout, and... Now Bray is still going through his past. So, so what happened after the the Randy Orton stuff, Joseph? Um, I have absolutely no idea. He he, I don't know. He found a mask. I don't. Who cares? That's a very bad answer because I was actually looking for you to help remind me what happened after the Randy Orton. Stuff. Okay, hang on. I'll actually help. I'll help. He got moved to Raw. Did he? And okay. He, yeah, and he had a few with. A few with Seth Rollins in which we, like, the whole of the world was like, okay, both these guys are now dead on wrestling. That was the end of it. Uh, and then he moved on to being in a program with Finn Balor. I'm not joking, this actually happened. Where Finn brought the demon down. And it was oh, the yeah, demon the out. Sister Abigail. Yes. Okay, that's where we're at then. That's where we're at. I don't, I have no please recollection. Please tell me, please tell me your angle here is going to be. You remember when I said it all began with Finn? I'm now going to back to when it began with Finn before that, when that one began. I'm now going to do it again with Finn. That's what I want you to do here. I'm not sure if you will, but yes, that is what happened. Uh, I, I could have really stretched this out and just, he went back to, uh, you know, the swamp area. I guess that was like yes. the, the Wyatt compound. I don't know. The, this, look, the Bray Wyatt character is a very complicated and long storied character and I, i'm just trying to to get to a certain point and i don't it actually begun it with kane right didn't it begin with kane i, mean, I remember it, so i think they did like a fire man inferno deal anyway carry on Who cares? no recollection of this at all well, i love that you're the guy in control of this bray Wyatt. i mean <laughs> i'm now having to recite bray Wyatt history to you this is not what i've ever wanted to do on this program but uh, here i am <laughs> uh bray is what what did he do 
when the stuff, you... I, I, what you just mentioned oh the Finn oh, Bal- the sister abigail stuff sister abigail yeah, okay. yeah sorry. So, I, I thought you was asking me about the cane field i don't know i just mentioned it offhand carry on so bray searches for sister abigail can i borrow alexa bliss for this no no you can borrow um who have i got i don't know you can use billy k for it if you'd like that'd be quite funny wouldn't it <laughs> I think I have just like Sonya just sitting around like doing nothing. I actually don't have anybody who's going to be Sister Abigail because why? Why would I? Um, but that but that's the search. He searches for Sister Abigail. Okay, I'm gonna have to get okay. to this angle way before SummerSlam. I am not going through and doing this this whole thing. Okay, so searches for Sister Abigail. Cool. We have 34 minutes left. <laughs> All right, let's get uh let's get the Queen on the show. And and she can actually just beat Sonya Deville. Wow, yeah. sudden, <laughs> sudden stuff from the Queen. Um, bow down, I guess, right? That's you know, in the uh, I think I may have mentioned this before, but who cares? Monday Night Raw. You know they have like the hashtag changes for each segment. Yes. Charlotte Flair's segments. It just literally says hashtag bow down. <laughs> the the women's title is on the line because we don't we typically don't believe in non title matches. What's the point? Wow, head of your time in that sense, right? That's a new thing, isn't it? Samoa Joe doesn't believe in him either. He reacts every time someone wins one. Yeah, so I know. <laughs> That's the best part, Samoa Joe. He's like, title change. Wait, why is this non title? In fear of being out of date here, do you think that's a bit or not? I, I don't know. I really just think like Joe is unclear of what the rules are like that's my interpretation is that joe just has no idea if it's title or non-title he sees the champions in the match he figures the titles are on the line and they're not and he just he's disgusted by it i mean in fairness i love Samoa joe but i would be disappointed if he was paying attention to like some of these talking segments where he's explained i really hope when them things are on he doesn't have to talk he just completely zones out (laughs) i would admire that even more actually um we're gonna do. See, I have Big like I, I, Big have, there, pal. I have so much like booked, and then I still have all these guys where I'm like, I need to do something with these people. Like, I, I really is like Mr. Perfect and AJ Styles, great, great workers. I I don't have a well laid out plan because I'm trying to get like knock like Nakamura as a heel as well, and so. So what I was going to do is I was going to do a Daniel Bryan and Nakamura feud um, for, for the United States title. But Daniel Bryan's a face, and I needed him in that Brock Lesnar role. And my other top two main event heels are Mr. Perfect and AJ Styles. And I do have SummerSlam plans for for both of these men. I don't know what I'm doing with them in that month before SummerSlam is the or the the month you know the lead up to the triple h tribute show I, i'm just not sure yeah it's tough this is the issue with like when you have too many guys something don't fit in right it's sometimes less is more as i know with yoko zuna sitting on the bench <laughs> but you know it also is tough um i don't know i'm looking at jeff hardy i feel like you could steal a match with perfect or aj beating up jeff hardy but probably yeah that that's like that's what i'm looking at is just like all right what kind of matches can i do like aj against finn balor like wh- why not just book that match yeah so I, I would have no i mean that's the thing with guys like aj and hennig right they're, they're so great because even if you have nothing for them they're gonna just have good matches on tv and make the show better yeah so it works all right so i'm, I'm gonna do uh I'm going to actually do Mr. Perfect and, and Alistair Black. Mr. Perfect defeated him in that tag team match. He did. Alistair Black. So that sets up uh, this match here. Alistair Black was actually in the finals of the United States tournament, and then I'm just beating him. Yeah. He's he's a weird one because you, you don't want to beat him often, but you also, if you don't have plans for him, what are you going to do with him? It's not, that's the deal where on Raw he still has these periods where he's just doing squash matches. Yeah. But they, they always want him in position, but they haven't quite found where that when that's going to happen yet. It's weird. All right, Mr. Perfect, Aleister Black. Like, I would give this so much more than 13 minutes, but I don't. Like, I'm already running short on time. Yes. Yes. All right, let's move this segment down. That's not the main event. I need a main event. I don't even have a main event for this show. I think you just nailed it a minute ago, AJ and Finn, right? Maybe. I don't want to just keep doing, like, main events that aren't actually, like, 
going anywhere. So yeah, I'm with you. But at this point, I mean, it's you know, you look, <laughs> you're looking at what you got there. It's like <laughs> they because that was the tag match. It was Black and Balor versus yeah, yeah. There's at least something there. There's some logic to it. And I'm not sure you're going to win best booker for it, Jeremy, but I think it's, <laughs> I think it's acceptable. I am going to win best booker. This is all Gato does. He just throws great matches out there. Ex- exactly what he does. Yes, that's <laughs> exactly it. Yeah. That Suzuki Okada match. Suzuki lost a bunch before that. And then he's like, ah, let's give Suzuki this title match because he, he attacked Okada once. True. Yes, that is exactly what happened, actually. <laughs> In that case, that is literally as deep as it went. But it was fun, though, right? It was fun, you got to admit. Yeah, you were there for that match, right? I was. It was very fun. The, the arena was... Um, there was like a 10-minute portion where Suzuki was just throwing forearms to Okada. And every time he would do it, the crowd would do like the shh so they could hear the <laughs> violent noise that Suzuki shot um, forearms, mate. It was pretty great, I must say. That was a day. That was a CM Punk at StarCast um the, nxt that, uk yeah takeover, NXT, right? yeah one of the nxt uk takeovers that and i think uh double or not or whatever whatever the aew all out. was yeah all out, right? yeah, yeah like that was a day right there yeah that um, no, was, was i ignored everything else that i wasn't at i've got to admit but you are correct <laughs> it was it was actually pretty wild um all right and then bret hart just uh before the main event he, he's there he's on television he's like he's cutting a bret hart promo of you know i'll fight anybody i'll face anybody he's gonna he's gonna issue an open challenge for next week all right no, this is exciting this is and is he wearing a hat again <laughs> no he's not wearing a hat this time because uh brock kicked his that was the only hat brett owen and and brock kicked it into the crowd he never got it back he said you know what uh, a fan deserves that hat more than i do and, and so that that was it he, he's not wearing a hat ever again see i think you've gone the wrong way about because i think what you should actually do is he should always wear a hat and because <laughs> one fan gone he wants more fans to so when he gives the sunglasses to a kid he then gives the hat to a fully grown man <laughs> that's my suggestion but i'm with you i like either way works fine all right, Bret Hart does a promo. Two Canadian legends in one segment here. By the way, I have to say, I find it fascinating that this show, which you had the least plans for, is in an overrun. You're going to have to, like, chop time off of this. This is going to be... This is a first in this series, right? We no, haven't no, had no. I, don't, I don't have to chop time off of this. I thought I saw that you was over. I may be wrong. Oh, I do have to cut five minutes. Jesus. <laughs> I thought you was already one minute over. I thought I'd oh, imagine. I didn't it. realize I was. I thought it says you must book at least one more minute. No. Oh, I can't You're... read. All right. Um. Oh, man. I had to chop five minutes off of something. All right. All right. I'll just find some stuff. See, okay. this is what I love about this because your brain wants to take time off Bray Wyatt, but you know full well that you can't <laughs> do that. Uh, the Sonya and Charlotte match is getting cut. Wow. Yeah, five minutes. Sorry. Look, the Let's queen. Let's time to bow down. Yeah. Look, no the more. You know, you got to put the queen over more. She doesn't need seven sure. minutes to beat Sonya Deville. She only needs five. Um. <laughs> uh. Let's let's cut. I wish I could cut Mojo Rawley and Walter. Like, why do we need the two minutes of nothing? Just give me the one minute squash. <laughs> uh. We're gonna we're gonna cut the. I guess we can cut some of these like five minute promos for and yes. to, to four minutes. So I think we'll just do that. So we'll, we'll take a minute off of this. Cause I don't want to cut any more matches. I actually like where the matches are at, but the promos we usually book for five minutes to fill time. Now I've booked them for five minutes cause I've gone over time. It's interesting. I was looking through the, what you've got here and the matches are all pretty like they're not over the top already, are they? Like per- you said earlier about perfect and Alistair Black, only got 13 minutes. You couldn't go any more than that, unfortunately. But this is the issue of having every good wrestler on earth, right? That's this is all- right. This is the this is the issue with it, I guess. <laughs> all right, like even two smokes and Adam Cole and Murphy, like I would want that to be longer than 12 minutes, but yes, I don't. Yeah. All right, there we go. The show is booked. It's a show. Uh, we get, we have plans, ladies and gentlemen. Don't worry. All right, Gargano and Brian, good match. I blame Gargano for being a, a, a poor heel as, as to why this match was not as good. But a, a strong B start to the show. I'll take it. 
I mean, Brian and Brock is legit going to be an A, right? We're convinced this at this point, right? I would think so. I would really think so. Like, I, I've put a lot of booking and effort into it. We're going to have Brock on the next couple of shows. Uh, yeah, I think it's going to be an A show. Uh, I hope Brian, so. For, yours, Brian, for the company's sake, I hope so. <laughs> Brian with a, a B, pro, B promo. That's fine. It'll get better next week when uh, Brock is there. Brock always delivers the ratings. A C. I think Renee, probably judging her on her microphone skills, was probably a misfire, but what can you yeah. do? What can you do? All right. Uh, a B. Good match right there. Did not expect a B there. I thought that might like, be like a B minus, C plus type thing. Adam Cole is real good. Adam right? Cole He's is very real good. good. Yeah. I might have to do more with him, but I can barely do anything with guys like AJ <laughs> Styles right now. What am I going to do with Adam Cole? <laughs> You may need to... I'm not sure. I'm thinking about what your balance is. I guess it wouldn't help to turn AJ babyface, right? It wouldn't even help. It's just the too many guys on every which side, I guess. I'm not no, sure. No, I, I definitely don't have enough like baby faces that I feel... Because like, Balor is a guy that I probably should do more with. I just... Because he's a baby face. And, yes. And like, I don't really care to do anything with him as a bit like Alistair Black is, is kind of that same thing of like, I don't have an issue with Alistair Black. I just don't see him at that at that same kind of level so yeah it probably would be wise to turn aj or somebody babyface but we'll get there i mean gargano is going to be babyface but he's also like booked as a lower mid carter right now mm-hmm. so it'll take a lot to kind of heat him up to that position yeah all right sammy oh this should have been better very very disappointed yeah three minutes of sammy being impressed should be an a star yeah a plus and yeah, that that wasn't good which i kind of figured but that's okay <laughs> C minus is just a squash match. That's all right though. Yeah, Mojo's off his game, pal. Yeah, yeah. B, there we go. The the video segment that was but wasn't gets a B. Amazing, amazing that that's your like leading. Pro- oh, look <laughs> at this. I mean, what what do you expect when you have Oscar carrying Bailey to a great match? So, man, I I'm telling you, I wish you could have seen the effort I put into Bailey and Sasha Banks stats. I really try, and you can see here <laughs> this this was a good match, wasn't it? This was really, this was good. I mean, it would be a good match. You have Oscar and Bailey twelve minutes. It's probably going to be a good match, right? Yes, I mean Bailey. Look, as much as we poke fun, she doesn't really have bad wrestling matches. She no. may have some boring ones, but it depends who she's wrestling. <laughs> right. And I mean, Oscar, Oscar's very good. So yes, she's not having a bad match with Oscar anyway. No. All right, C plus. That's fine. I think that's about the same thing did last week. B. It's fine. Just a mash that they're out there. Yep. Oh no. This is very bad, oh. Joseph. Oh no! Oh, the empire is falling. Oh no! The one, the one sure thing: death taxes in A Bray Wyatt is now B plus Bray Wyatt. Very, very upsetting. I should have given him more time. I think that was the issue. I only gave him seven minutes. Should have been longer. Yeah, this is um, this is a very sad day. It really <laughs> is a sad day, and we need to kind of think about what this means for the future of the series. But for now. Uh, we'll take the B plus and we'll just log it and we'll see what happens next week. Right, that's all we can do, right, Jeremy? Yes. So we can yeah, do. next week will be very telling for for old Bray. All right, B minus B for bow down as always by the Queen. Charlotte is real good on this, right? Yes. Rightly so. I yeah. mean, that's fair enough. But... All right, a B segment. Yeah, Renee was underwhelming. That's okay. Again, judging her with her microphone skills probably drags it down. But that's honestly, right. I think with the backstage interviews, it's just been not rated because unfortunately they don't really do anything in modern WWE. Right? They just kind of ask the most generic question. Yeah. As great as Renee is, like, so the watching the show, she doesn't really do a lot on the program itself. The, the interviewers are just limited so much, unfortunately. Right. All right. AJ Styles, Finn Balor, solid, solid main event. Just a yes. match. All right. Probably a, a B show. Yeah, all right. The the stock is a little bit down after this, coming off that strong week. Um, I, I'm sorry, Joseph. You know this was your go home week. I, I should have done better to to boost it, uh, but I, I unfortunately failed you. I'm looking at it the other way. I'm looking at it as you giving me the platform to build upon and saying you be the star this week, Joe. Okay. That's what I think you're saying. That's the way I'm looking at it. That's why I'm choosing to look at it, uh, and I'm I'm thankful for that. So thank you very much. I think we're gonna this week's gonna be historic by the end of it. I'm convinced of that much. Uh, which will be a false optimism probably by the end of the week. But we'll see where it goes, right? Let's just hope there's no tragedies to steal the uh, spotlight from Judgment Day. That would be a terrible shame. That, that would not be good. All right, we've got emails. Who's upset? Okay, raw rating is fine, I guess. 
Seth Rollins, what do you have to say? Matt R- the second person to criticize Matt Riddle's selling. Well, when Matt Riddle is not even wrestling. Extraordinary. Uh, Mr. Perfect, he says Montez Ford doesn't get. Didn't Mr. Perfect have issues with Montez Ford previously? These Seth Rollins, Mr. Perfect, uh, Bret Hart, not a fan of these these guys just smoking smoking in the backstage area. Yeah, I mean, Perfect's got a lot of issues on Raw. It's pretty obvious he doesn't fit in, right? He doesn't agree with the culture. He doesn't agree with the approach. Um, he's just he's struggling with it, man. It's hard being pulled out of a time machine and dropped on some Monday Night Raw. It really is tough. And he's having some good matches. He's having fun with wrestling, but the rest of it is difficult. New NXT feud. R-Truth and Tommaso <laughs> Ciampa against the War Raiders. All right. Of course, the um, famed team of Goldie and R-Truth. <laughs> Oh, uh, remind me to check uh, Walter's popularity after this goes through. Yes. Because you've committed about as much as you can possibly commit, right? Yeah, but it's only been like a month in the game, not even. So I don't know how much like he'll get boosted in a month. But in fairness, he has won six matches on TV and he's wrestled for six minutes, less than six minutes in those six matches altogether. So <laughs> so he's he's been smashed out. I'm with you. It's not long enough, but... It's still interesting because a lot of the time he's beating guys that are more over than him in the game, right? Because yes. they've been on WWE main roster. So I'm not sure. And he's Maybe. working with uh, Seth Rollins now. I don't know. Which is a huge he... boost, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, like you would think six weeks of squash matches and then a program with Seth Rollins on actual WWE television would get somebody over. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, especially when they're killing guys in 30 seconds flat. That's pretty... That's an actual... Like, the squashies, people know what they look like, but the 30-second deals are a little bit different. Look at poor Dolph. I feel bad for Dolph. <laughs> right, but, you know, this game is a little bit different to where I don't know yes. if it's going to recognize things like that. All right, well... No, I think a squash is a squash in the game's mind, right? Yeah. Um, where is, like, the popular uh, thing? I know it's here, on... but it used to be... I mean, it's only at a D, so I can't imagine it's done... Oh, I think it's view profile. Yes, and then if you go popularity from there, I think you can do it. I could yeah. be wrong. Yeah, you're right. People can't see this, unfortunately. I thought it would be able to be seen. Um, I don't know if it's going to show a lot right now anyway, but we'll report back on Yeah, so it's from an E plus to a D. So it's just... Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty good in one month. Okay, so he started off at E plus openness. That, honestly, I'm going to be totally frank, that was an error on my part. He should have been more over than that, right? That's okay. He would get more reaction in front of a, a main... Rest- Woody, I don't know. I don't even know how over he is at this point. But <laughs> anyway, you've got him to where he probably should have been at the start, really, haven't you? All right. So we got that. All right, Wednesday, here we go. Any news that we need to see? No, not really. What happened on AEW Dark? Oh, I guess that was taped last Wednesday. Did Luther do anything? <laughs> You should just try and find out if Lufa's wrestled any matches yet. That would be the oh, real. Oh, we should. Let's do that. Is he under Lufa or Dr. Lufa? Uh, we're going to find out. He's Luther. Okay. Okay. Also, he's a, he's a manager in both of these companies. That's not good. It's weird. I keep seeing that he's a manager, and I'm pretty sure he's been wrestling professional wrestling matches on AW yeah. So Manchester. I assume he hasn't wrestled any matches, right? No, he hasn't wrestled any matches in this game. That's very important. At least he has that awesome photo. Yeah, that's a very good photo. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. Wednesday Night Wars. Here we go. Big, yes. big time stuff here. Let's go, Luther. <laughs> all right. Who's Lu- Who's Luther managing? That's what I want to know. Um, <laughs> I don't know. There's so many incredible <laughs> options there. Uh, maybe he's managing like Marco Stunt and the Jurassic spread. That'd be fun, <laughs> wouldn't it? That'd be amazing, actually. Yes. I'm not sure. Um, I think it's a shame though, that he's being limited to manager when he could be headlining these shows. Do you yes, not? I think it's a real 100%. shame. One hundred percent. I'm just every time we click through here, I'm just scared that we're going to ruin my big my big day. That's all I'm fearing here. Jeremy. <laughs> you know, we're, we're one bad headline away from my show taking place <laughs> under darkness. I don't want that. I want it to be the spotlight here. I'm hoping that you know, uh, the unfortunate passing of of Bruce Pritchard. I, I'm hoping that that's the only bad thing we get. Like, just no more. Yes. It happened. We don't need any more bad stuff happening. Yeah, it had a terrible effect on my brand. We all know how much SmackDown is linked with Bruce, right? It means a lot to us, so... That's right. Star oh. of NXT was Elias. All right, welcome to Raw next week, Elias. <laughs> I feel like you've done that one, right? I think have I have. You? I think I have, but... Who cares? Yeah. 
It'd be Kalisto. Oh, I should use Kalisto. I haven't used Kalisto. They got a B minus match, and I would imagine that Elias wasn't pulling that B minus. Where is Kalisto? Is he injured? In real life. In real life, yeah, he's injured in real life. Man, what a bummer for Kalisto that he misses the brief Lucha House party <laughs> push, you know? It's a bummer. John Morrison and Angelo Dawkins in a backstage segment. <sighs> Oh my good god, the acting in that segment. <laughs> wow, that is something to think about. Still hovering around 600,000 viewers. Makes sense. They're consistent, I mean, you can't Joe. Argue with They're them. consistent. Like, that is literally, <laughs> that is pretty. I mean, I guess it has like international viewers counted too, so it's obviously a little low, but realistically, it's not that far off. Yeah. Um, all right, AEW, good show. Brody Lee over Adam Page. I don't agree with that. That's all right. I wonder how Brody Lee fares in this. I'd imagine his stats are pretty good. Skit involving Chris Jericho and Adam Page. C. What? That seems egregious. That does. That's disgraceful, actually. An Adam Page, Ang- Hangman Page skit is, is an A star. That's the Bray Wyatt of AEW skits that they could put. What's the deal with Butcher and the Blade? <laughs> it's Just probably the... like one of... I don't know, actually. I thought I was going to say it's one of their only tag teams, but they have a lot of tag teams. Yeah, but I you guess took, they lost Santana. Yeah, I was yeah saying, you exactly. took Santana and Ortiz. But maybe Butcher and Blade are uh, inner circle members now. Definitely a like for like replacement, <laughs> isn't it? You know, Butcher and the Blade in for, for PNP. But if you do know though, Jeremy, that if, if they wasn't proud, they wouldn't actually be uh, powerful, would they? So it makes sense they are proud because otherwise they wouldn't be powerful. We're almost there. We're almost ready to have a good time. We are almost there. Who is James Key? I guess the Booker of Smash Wrestling. Okay. A good grasp of professional wrestling. I would hope wow. so. Wow. If he's going to book a company. Oh, my <laughs> well, gosh. never stopped us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you never stopped us. Here we are playing it through. We have the second part of you on coming. Um, there's some very scary stuff that comes up here. It really is a, a torrid experience. Here we go. Nitro is out of CMLL. Well, that's unfortunate. I thought you were going to say Nitro is back on the air. I was getting like, wow, what a turn up. Um, the news is getting, we're hoping, I mean, we don't want any more tragedy, but the news is going to slow down. Like you said this to me off air, right? The news, less kind of blockbuster signings now because everyone, all the free agents have been signed by people that are hiring and that's that. Yeah. So that's, that's fine. All right. Ortiz is healthy as we figured he would be. All right, Joseph, here we go. Smackdown, yeah. go home show. This is legitimately the go home show, right? We did not screw up the schedule here. Okay, if second, we did, man. Second <laughs> week of June. Ones. Okay. Second week of June, Judgment Day. Here we go. Big show. I have. Um, well, do you remember when I said at the start of this episode that I had a full format? Was in fact a lie. So we will see how <laughs> this goes. Um, I have some ideas. I have the best talk show in wrestling uh, set for its return. Oh, boy. I have, a, I have a match that no one asked for being booked. I have a lot of stuff going on here cannot wait for ms tv segment very exciting <laughs> okay um we're gonna open you never have your... any incidents why is that because we smash the cold beers and we deal with <laughs> we deal with it as you should as professional wrestlers jerry that's why we don't play lego do we <laughs> my god where do you think we're going here um okay we're opening with the best talk show history of wrestling that's never had a good segment uh a moment of bliss <laughs> I, what, I thought Ms. TV was coming back. Ms. TV, we've used Ms. TV once. We didn't you have Bob, used Ms. TV. Yeah, you have. All right. How dare of... you forget that Bobby Lashley segment? Changed <laughs> well, I, I remember it, but you said the the best talk show in history, so I just assumed it was Ms. TV. No, you didn't let me finish. I said the best talk show in history that hasn't had a good segment. Very key, very key <laughs> qualifier. Okay, um, we're doing Alexa and Nikki. They are hosting the final four in the U.S. title tournament. That oh, is Keith Lee. Samoa Joe, Randall Orton, and the great promo that is Rey Mysterio Jr. All right, this is a and segment. he's doing that thing. You know when Ray talks in hushed tones to make you think that he's saying something important <laughs> and he's really not saying anything at all? He's doing that thing here. Um, and you know what I'm going to do? I don't even care. I'm going to do it. It's a weird opportunity to do a weird match. This is going to lead us into a fatal four-way with these people. I don't care. I'm doing it, Jeremy. That's what we're doing here. A um, fatal four-way this... the, the day... Um two days before the pay-per-view yes 100 percent. okay look this is for the mid cards. it's not like our main event we're blowing it's a weird match that we never have a chance to book let's just do a four-way and have fun you know right. i don't how... know who's booking it by the way i just <laughs> how long it's just is a match this that happens um 10 minutes 
you got to have uh, Shane McMahon come out as the authority figure. To, to I will never this. use that man again. I don't know why I did it once. I hate him enough as it is. Now it's now I'm a full rivalry with the guy. <laughs> All right. Um, fatal four way. It's yeah. a good match. I like this match. It's one of those deals where it's like, look, it doesn't make a ton of sense, but as a TV show, it gives us an opportunity to do a really strange match that is going to be awesome, right? And that's that's all you can do sometimes. Sometimes you have to sacrifice logic and uh, consistency and believability <laughs> to do some cool moves, and that's what we're going to do here. Um, we are going to do... I'm looking at who we've got here. I'm looking at it. I'm mulling it over. We're going to do Alton. Hmm, I'm not sure. We're going to do Joe over Alton. All right, so Joe's not winning the title on Sunday. Factual. Correct. 100% <laughs> true. Um, I'm hoping he's over enough to beat Randy, though. If Randy... Because I never want to make Randy mad. You know that, Jeremy, about me. I'm not going to make Randy mad. How long is this match? Man, I'm looking at what I've got left. Um, it's it's got to be a decent left. 16 minutes we'll go with. Right. I never, you know what's weird? I'm pretty good at gauging like how long wrestling matches are, but their multi-man matches could be any length, and I'd have no idea. I wouldn't oh, be unable yeah. to guess it. What's Randall saying here? He's not happy that he's losing. This how match. does he feel about um, losing to Ray Junior, who speaks in hushed tones? <laughs> and I want it to be clear that I'm talking about the one that speaks in those tones too, not just the normal Ray Mysterio. <laughs> nope. Randy's just not losing. Who Randy doesn't play ball, man, does he? <laughs> Who is Randy losing to at the pay per view? Because you might he's have an issue here. This is the thing. I know that he's going to leave the pay per view upset because he's doing a clean job, and I'm not. I'm not messing around with that. So instead, we will do. Why don't you just Ray protect over. him? Just, just just protect him in this match. No, no, we're not doing. We're not doing that. Okay. I mean, you know what? Actually, Randy's right because I did just think about this. We're doing a full tournament, right? So everyone's doing a job other than the winner of the tournament. That's fine. Uh, we will do. Um, Ray over no Joe over Ray will do okay in fact we just hired Ray's son why am I trying to protect Ray I've already given his son a job for Christ's <laughs> sake let's, let's, just let, let's, let's let the man do the do the loss here we'll be fine yeah, who's uh, losing Ray is okay. <laughs> Ray is losing to Smudge Joe over Ray okay <laughs> I was like ranting and raving about the fact that we've given his uh, job and he's like hovering <laughs> over Rey Mysterio as Victor. <laughs> um, this is your storytelling match because you're definitely telling a story here. Sure am. Yeah, what a story it is. Um, Orton still is not happy. He d- he just oh, he just wants to win. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what we're gonna do? Randy's gonna pin Rey Mysterio. <laughs> That's what we're gonna do. <laughs> There are some people in this industry that I'll disrespect, but knowing what I'm going to have Randy do on Sunday, I'm going to not disrespect Randall. He can hit his heart uh, and move on. <laughs> All right. Which is hilarious because on Sunday, he's going to be beating Ray again. So they're going to have to come up with two spots in which he catches him in an RKO. Okay, uh... okay, that's by the way, you learned a valuable lesson there as to what happens when you book matches you shouldn't book. That's what happens. Okay? <laughs> yeah, you, okay, need someone, that... you need someone to step up and crack some knuckles. That's what's really the issue, is you got a True. locker room full of cowards not unwilling to step up to Randall Orton. Speaking of such, our next match, six-man tag, and we have two outside... We have two... Well, three outsiders, I guess it is a six-man tag. Rick Rude and Pride, Proud and Powerful <laughs> taking on Kevin Owens and the Usos. Yeah, this is... um. This is standard pay per view build, but there'll be more with Rude and Owens. I need to just get this match on there first. I'm going to try this out with Santana and Ortiz. I think the more I keep this program in the ring, the better it will do, you know? Yes. The promos have been, um, well, they've been very sad. <laughs> All right. It's a good six man tag. I'm a fan of this match as well. I like your card so far. Okay. Um, Santana over the Uso that was bad on commentary, which was Jimmy. <laughs> And they'll also be mad about that, by the way, but they're going to have to deal with it. He was bad on commentary. That's the way it is. <laughs> how long is this match? Um, I'm trying to figure out how much time I'm going to have left. Uh, we'll go with 14 minutes for now. Because the main event is actually rather short tonight, which could kill my show. But you know what? I'm booking it like as though it's a real thing. So let's just do it this way. Okay? Uh, before that match, I want a Rick Rude promo. And then after it, I would like a brawl. I don't know how much time that will take you to book those two things. That should be pretty simple, right? Yeah, I mean, we'll give it four because I think um, what the how the game recognizes it is like four minutes influence like the actual show. Anything yes. less than four minutes like doesn't actually influence anything. Um, 
Because uh, remember, this is Rude's retort, isn't it? After Owens called him out for the match. So right. this this is an angle. And then the, the, the brawl deal, to be honest, the brawl doesn't even need to be an angle because the brawl is actually in the match and it leaves the two teams left. Like Usos and PMP are the only things left in the ring because uh, Rude and Owens brawl to the back kind of deal. You know, one of those right. deals, they get yeah, taken yeah. out of the match. So yeah. you don't even need to do an angle there. Oh, that's fine. Um... Okay, we're going to do the, the illustrious uh, Carmella-Becky Lynch match that we set up. Um, and I'm not even going to put the bio on the line. I don't care. You know, Carmella is um, Carmella's losing a lot, folks. I'm sorry to say. I mean, she's, she didn't have a great chance of thriving on this roster before. But after getting very mad about something innocuous, she had absolutely <laughs> no chance. Six minutes, Becky Lynch over, grabs the microphone, you know, and says, does the classic... Uh, what, you know, the promo that she does about the slap, the this, that, and the next thing. And then <laughs> AJ, AJ is not here this week. Um, she just cuts a promo. Five minutes, in-ring promo, with all of the Becky Lynchisms that you've come to know and love, Jeremy. <laughs> the thing is, when someone's cut as many in-ring promos in recent times as her, like, Lynch, I'd imagine everyone watching this is like, oh, yeah, I know what he's talking about. Yeah. yeah that, I can see that promo. That's a promo that she can't share. What are you t- talking about? Becky has not been on television for oh god, um, yeah. <laughs> two months now. Oh, dear. Good point. Um, <laughs> anyway, okay, Drew and Miz, this great view that you're loving uh, with the, the Bob and Miz connection. Is this the match, uh, Drew and Miz? Yes, for one-on-one, Drew and Miz. And we're also going to do a backstage segment, which I'll book after. Okay. Um, can you use Drew Gulak? I'm tired of typing Put Drew and getting Drew. Gulak. Or change his name. Just change his name to Gulak. Vince is like, there's too many Drews on this show. Get rid of uh, Gulak's first name. I mean, in fairness, as soon as those <laughs> two men are on the same roster, that is happening. He's going to become Gulak, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, McIntyre and Miz. I don't want to kill Miz. We're going to go 12 minutes. He's fine. I don't want to murder him, but I also don't want to do like a 25-minute match. <laughs> McIntyre Drew wins. hasn't done. He hasn't lost a match yet, right? Drew's been pretty kept pretty strong. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm assuming it's right, we'll a we'll non-title. Go. Yes, it is. Um, which I know you hate this show now. Coward booking you hate non-title matches. Okay, so um, we've got two angles, but the first one is the Miz. To Bobby Lashley tonight, Bob will have a first a front row ticket to see how it's done. A star, because Bobby is asking him why he's dressed the way he is, and Miz is like, "What do you mean?" And he goes, "Why are you dressed like?" That? And he's, you know, he doesn't even understand what Bobby's question. Why wouldn't he dress like this? Why wouldn't he have a headband with sunglasses and a full length jacket? Why wouldn't he, Jeremy? <laughs> and he says, "You're going to see last night." And the finish to that match, um, by the way, is you know that awful taunt Miz does, where he like flaps his hands up and down a lot. He does that, and then he gets claymored. And Bob is like, man, this guy is a he is just an absolute fool. I don't know why I'm, I'm linked to this guy, but I am. And then afterwards, speaking of the Becky Lynch promo, you've seen this promo an awful lot recently too. Drew McIntyre is calling out, where, why is Roman Reigns, why didn't he help him last week? Where is he this week? Um, what's the deal? I thought we were pals. I give you this rematch. And since I've given it to you and we signed the dotted line, you've been pretty cold, man. You've been pretty mean to to uh, the Scottish psychopath. Is he still called the so- Scottish psychopath, Jeremy? I, I don't think so. I think it's like... I don't know what it is now, but <laughs> okay. I really okay. don't. Um, and eventually, after he, while he's cutting his promo, Roman does come out and he says, look, I saved you once. That was enough. It's all business now, man. Like, that belt means a lot to me. And you'll find out this weekend, this Sunday, it means more to me than you could ever know. So I guess this needs to be, I guess he's a, I don't know, eight minutes fine for this? Yeah, it's probably, probably, probably needs to be longer. I just set the default. That's fine. Five. All right, eight minutes. It's a good segment. I like the build for this match. Because it's layers. That's why you like That's it so right. much, right? That's right. Layered and nuanced storytelling. Because in fairness, Roman hasn't done anything bad here, right? Like, he wants to be the WWE champion. He's not being like a, you know, dastardly mustache twirling heel. He's just, you know, he's playing by different rules a little bit. Right. Okay, the one other segment I want to do, um, and this is a, a favorite of mine. We're going to have uh, Alexa and Nikki leave in the building, and Ember and Liv like they are just absolutely just kerfuffled at what's going on here they cannot believe that two days before the most important title match of their lives <laughs> Alexa and Nikki are doing a talk show segment and they, they say to them look we may be pals and all that good stuff this is not fun and games those women tag titles are the most prestigious tag team titles in the history of the world <laughs> and then some, sh- some shoving goes back and forth um 
and so I don't know who. I guess people break them up. Like it's not a deal where they hate each other, but Alexa and Nikki are very disrespected by the question of their commitments to these belts. You know, this is because Ember and Liv they haven't won any main roster titles, right? Ember hasn't. I know Liv hasn't. Ember hasn't won any titles right on the main roster. I'm right in saying this. Yeah, so, I don't think so. Yeah. So this is a big deal to them, and they can't believe that Alexa and Nikki are like, you know, doing coffee mug bits in the middle of the ring on a talk show. So this is what we're doing here: uh, some pushing and some shoving. Um, in the I don't know if this is like in the car park or there's something something different is what I want. Uh, so that that can work, and it will absolutely bomb because as we found out multiple times over, <laughs> Ember and Liv in promo. I mean, I can't argue with it. I've said it a million times. It is what it is, folks. I'm gonna check your uh, Iconics rating, your Iconics reunion see what that did i think it was Thank you very much. Show. uh it did a c minus so that's better than those ember and live segments i feel like it is you're correct um can we did i do anything with ria last week oh, she had wrestled me no. Right? no 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 the oh. the mia yim match was uh two weeks ago i believe um i'll double check but because i remember asking because you had that long bianca and Naomi match, and I remember asking what you were going to do with Rhea, and I don't think you had Rhea on the show at all last week. Okay, so I have two segments, but I have another um, um, Rhea package in this show. I'm going to figure out what that is, so don't book it yet, because I need to figure out what match you're doing it. But the the Naomi promo is, off, sorry, not Naomi, a Bianca promo after, Naomi's not on the show yet, is she? No. Okay, I'm trying to figure out how I can, um, can we have, oh, this feels like an ominous thing to say, I can't believe these words come out. Can we have Naomi on commentary <laughs> for Carmella and Becky Lynch? Uh, is that the is that the worst idea I've had yet? Sure. I mean, we we can we can do it. Uh, um, are you positive? Like, yes, I am. I feel like her and Nigel can have some fun dialogue. Um, I mean, I hope she didn't get tips from Jimmy. That's all I'm saying. I mean, yeah, that is a good point. The fact <laughs> that he couldn't do it, and I'm that. Anyway, maybe it's a rib. Um, okay, we're gonna do. We're gonna follow that match with Bianca promo where she's like, "So hang on, you mean to tell me that I call out the man, I say she's stuck in me, and then the next week or two weeks out, whatever it is, you know, she wants to have a tune-up match before the pay-per-view, and she's not gonna wrestle me. She's gonna wrestle the princess of Staten Island that isn't even from Staten Island. Are you kidding me? I am the EST of SmackDown. <laughs> I am. I go here now, right? This is the segment." Another big promo. We're gonna trust me. This is slow build. I love this. I love what I'm doing with this. That's the segment. Why don't it? Why isn't it just EST of WWE? Like, she's yeah. just the best in all of WWE. Yeah, I mean that works. True. Okay. I didn't want to. I didn't want to take any shots across the uh, brand. No, that's true. that's okay. We we understand. She can. Thanks, man. Yeah, that's fine. I appreciate it. I really do because that means a lot to the promo set. Because <laughs> her stumbling on the on the initials every time is going to be a real problem. <laughs> Okay. Uh, okay, so it's just a Bianca. So you have a Becky promo and then a Bianca promo. Yes, because the lot, the you know, you know that deal they do where they cut and you see the screen that we're watching, and then Bianca's also watching it. That yeah. deal. She's seen the promo. She's like, I can't believe that she's not responding to what I've said yet. I've called her a coward on television. What's the deal? Um, okay, I like this. I want to do a Rhea where we contrast her with Bianca, and we have a talk about the fact in a, in like a sit down deal where she talks about it. like she's not gonna whine. She's not gonna call, like you know call anyone out like that. She knows that everyone in the division knows the truth. And eventually, uh, this will be her division. And you know that thing that she says at the start of her theme music, or someone says? She's going to say that. I don't know what it is, though. Um, this is my yes. brutality? Yeah, she's going to say, I don't know, that wouldn't work, actually. Uh, <laughs> she could say something close to it. Maybe we'll change her theme music for the sake of this. <laughs> Does this she do the stomp? I mean, she gets up in the middle of this sit-down interview and just screams out, this is my brutality! And then she does like the yeah. big stomp right there on the set. I think that And works. Charlie just doesn't even sell. She's like, <laughs> yeah. yep. Yeah, this is, this is interesting. Uh, the, the rear thing is like, keep her in position for what I'm eventually going to do. So this is all fine. We're contrasting her and Bianca. I've explained that a million times. So this is all good. I'm looking at what else I've got here. Okay. Can I have a look at the analysis screen once this, this deal is uh, in place? Okay. I think you just need to have a Dolph Ziggler and uh, I don't know Ricochet match. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna do. Um, I haven't booked Drew Gulak like once. Wow. Yeah, I know. I keep clicking him for uh, <laughs> instead of. Uh, okay, I've got it. I've got McIntyre. it. Gulak and Kushida versus Dolphin Rude. So, so what that? is it? Gulak and Kushida against Dolphin Rude. 
Yeah, because you basically okay. gave me the idea of them as a tag team earlier when you told me they wrestled at Evolve. <laughs> okay. In fact, that, that might not have been earlier. That may have been eight weeks ago in TW land. But to me, it was earlier. Okay. Matt wrestling tag teams. They always get over in WWE. <laughs> um, yeah, you're right, though. I did need to get these guys a win. Now, I don't want to make Dolph and Rude upset. That's the last thing I need, you know? Um, yeah, eight is perfectly fine. <laughs> It's probably fine. Do you want this to be your steal the show match? I don't know otherwise what your steal the show match is. You know Drew what? I think we Miz. should do. Uh, can we change it so that Drew and Miz is my storytelling and steal the show is the four way by any chance? Yeah, so yeah. that's long. Yeah, no problem. I'm trying to think about this. No problem. It, how long can steal, steal the show matches be before it, they have like a penalty at some point? I don't, don't think they? they have a penalty, but or I think it depends on sort of the workers. Um, but yeah, okay. you, you should be fine. The, the issue is sometimes you'll get it if like it's too long and the workers try to go for an all out pace for too long. Yeah. But usually that's like a one on one match, but like because it's a multi man match, I think you'll be okay. Okay, that's fine. And it's only sixteen minutes, like I'm pretty sure Should be fine. Yeah, yeah. You'll be alright with that. Okay, that sounds good. Where are we at here on time? We need oh we need one more minute. Okay. Yeah, you can bump uh, just something up a minute if you want. Before oh, that was my idea, but let me just quickly look one more time at the analysis deal because I got so excited at Rude and Dolph, I didn't even see anyone else. <laughs> I didn't even see anyone else on the thing. Hold on, I'm trying to set up. Okay, there. All right, analysis. Okay. There awesome. you go. Okay. Um, Garza is an interesting one that I just I've struggled to do anything much who, with. Who right? said they really liked Garza? Um, Roman. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're not doing that match on the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you know what? I think we're actually going to do a Gaza match here. I think we're going to do. Gaza's not an opener, right? I'm looking at that right. No, he's yeah, alone. Yeah. yeah, he's good. Okay, we'll do Gaza and Tazawa in a five minute match. Okay. Because, unfortunately, and this is one of the biggest things Jeff reminds yourself of in this game. Guys that you don't have plans for, you do have to give them wins sometimes, don't you? Unfortunately, like you can't just sort of insert them when you want a guy to lose a good match. So as good as Gaza is, I don't have anything on the on the slate for him, but I need to keep him somewhat strong. Yeah. All right. Okay. That's perfect. All right. Let me just look at this uh, situation here. Yeah, I'm trying to. There. That's that's. Tell me where you want to move around. Okay, uh, can we do the women's title hype after the the original, the first match, the four way? Because that makes sense, kind of logically, you know. The you know women's oh, tag title yeah, hype. Yeah. yeah. Um, that splits up that. Oh, after the first. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Okay. That's yeah. fine. That's fine. Um, that's the rest of it is fine. That's okay. absolutely fine. All right. Yep. Okay. Here we go. Go home show for Judgment Day, the final show of this episode. C plus think- seems fine. I think there's some good stuff on this show. Um, yes. This, this is about what I expected. Keith Lee in the promo deals is not being a home run. You know? I <laughs> it mean, is not Michael, being... Michael Cole and Nigel McGuinness apparently didn't do too well with commentary either. I mean, how can they possibly have a moment for <laughs> a second they can't be better at commentary? Well, that's insane to me. But yes, this is all fine. But it got the crowd hotter. A st- strong start. I think I told you last week when we booked, which is five weeks ago, when people were saying... I can only envision this stuff in empty arenas now. Like that's all yes. I can do. Like I just envision this segment happening in an empty arena and it sounds awful, but I'm sure in front of a live crowd, it would be less awful. This segment is one of the first times that my brand has done the same thing. Cause I've <laughs> now seen like them do this moment of bliss still in empty arenas. To be fair, it sounds exactly the same, but yeah, it is weird. All right. Um, B a good match. Randy Orton yeah. heading. That's why he didn't want to lose. He's like, look, I'm the best guy out here. I'm not losing to these uh, these geeks. I'm, I'm encouraged by Keith Lee's kind of closing the gap a little bit. Yes. Right? Like, he's doing a good job here. Randy is amazing. The thing with Randy is it's one of those situations where if you're making the mod, like you have to make him great at everything, basically. And unfortunately, what happens is he ends up being the best wrestler on, on the roster, star, even though in reality he has no real good matches anymore, unfortunately. I, yeah, I disagree, good. Joe. You saw that... Uh straight up wrestling match between Randy Orton and Edge at Backlash and they totally redeemed themselves. Uh I think it was a well, it was much better than the WrestleMania match, obviously. It might be the match of the year. I've heard people say it it's the best match they've seen in the last twenty years. So wow. uh Randy Orton has certainly does have the qualifications to be the best wrestler in the world. 
Well, I'm going to say this now and get out of the way. Like, my prediction for Backlash that you've already watched, folks, is that Randy Orton kicks Edge in the balls as soon as the bell rings. That is my <laughs> prediction. If I am correct on that, tweet me celebration as you listen to this. Thank you very much. Okay, this was good. <laughs> All right, C+. Plus. I mean, look, I think I should be, like, thankful that yes, Bliss Cross dragged agree. this out of them. I agree. 100% agree. Locker room leaders, pal. They're leading the way for that women's tag division, right? Good match there. Good match. Good call on my part, making it a match-heavy build for the uh, the Usos. Yeah, yeah. This probably helped them, right? Okay. I'd imagine that feud probably got better off for this. Yes. Okay, works. All right. Good promo. Good promo by Rick Rude. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, Gulak and Kushida, not a great tag team. Thanks a lot, Jeremy. Wow. <laughs> right? Look, I said they wrestled now? each other on the show. I didn't say they were a tag team. Do you know what's interesting, though, is like normally that really hurts guys' performance, but they both still got a C. Yeah. They're very useful. I wish Goulet was a heel. He's kind of my Gargano, you know, where it's like I feel like I'd have more for him to do as a heel, but I can always turn him, I guess. That's fine. The Rhea Ripley dominating in the interview segments again. What a fascinating Rhea Ripley situation we have here. <laughs> Right? She can't have good matches, but she's having these, these promo segments here. I don't know, it's weird. Okay, it's fine. Naomi was well, weak at the announce desk, as you would expect. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this was much better than I thought Is it Becky's be. finisher just a pump handle slam? Like, yes. didn't she, she did use that as, like, her pinfall finisher, didn't she? Yeah, but it was like, wasn't it kind of a, um, it wasn't like a traditional pump handle slam. Right. right? It was like a little bit rock bottomy, I think. Yeah. Was what she did. Yeah. Like the Even way she beat Tom out a little bit. <laughs> yes, it was something like that. Yeah. All right, good oh, Becky yeah. promo. So much slap the head off and all that business. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh, am I the only one that senses there's some progress on this show? Or is that just me? No, oh, there, is. there is. There is. Okay, you... good. Good match there. Okay. I mean, that should have been better, but, you know, The Miz dragged it down, I would assume. Dragged it so far. Bob was so good questioning his time. <laughs> I, I I think this uh, main event, it'll probably be good because they're both over. I'll say I, B- is disappointing to me. I feel like this should have been at least a B. The Miz is like, he's the opposite of Alton, whereas when you do his stats, I'd imagine he sucks, right? Like yeah. there's not, I mean, I love the Miz, but I don't think he's actually rating high on anything individually. So <laughs> I, I didn't think this would be a great main event. It was more of a, this was the angle we were doing. Right. The angle closing is obviously the big deal. I don't know what that would actually do. There you go. Strong, there strong you go. segment. Strong go-home segment. People are definitely plopping down their nine ninety nine to the network to see this uh, Drew McIntyre-Roman Reigns match on Sunday. I think it's fair to say that the Matthew Knight Arena was ready for a good time. Yes. Jeremy, is that is that the truth? 100%. It seems like to me. strong closing show, very strong. It's a great closing angle right there. Yes, we're gonna keep going. All right, B felt like that should have been better. That that last <laughs> wow. angle, that last angle wow. really had it. I think your main event match of actually McIntyre and The Miz heard it. If that yes. was a B, this is probably a B plus show. But you know what? The stock went up a little bit. Uh, from this show the people are excited for uh judgment day on sunday yep. Jax, whatever happened to her so it was a good show it was a good show yeah i'm not like that b was a little bit of a low blow to me there i was really <laughs> feeling good about the a closing angle but i guess you're right the main event there was no match that really hit much so it makes sense yeah yeah that's the thing the matches did drag it down overall because it was a lot of b minus and yeah uh, matches but overall that, that closing segment, though, that's the money promo. That's what we call money promo in the business. Keep killing it, JJH. Wow. That was <laughs> um, that was extraordinary because I didn't realize you would do it. Like, you could have been doing a rock tweet the whole time there, and I wouldn't have known until you hit the, <laughs> you hit the closing line. That was great. All right. Um, SmackDown. Ricky Steamboat is retiring. You bring him in to beat Triple H. In the, he's 67 years old, finally retiring. Good for him. I don't understand that stuff. I don't know if it's retiring. Like, is it leaving the business altogether? Is that what the actually No, is? I, I think know. it's like officially like he's not going to. I mean, I guess this one, it does say he's taking time away from the business. What's his profile say? Just never wrestles. He's, he's out of the business. Yeah, Ricky's just out of the business. 
Okay, that makes more sense about a lot of the retirements because yeah. I was very confused as to what these fellows were doing in the industry. Yeah, maybe we should have clicked it and seen it. And because like the Triple H one was like retiring from in ring, you've got three yes. months to like book him for a match, and that's why we're doing the Triple H uh, tribute show. Yes, indeed. All right, Tazawa, yeah, you, Dolph Ziggler, still, you just won. You just oh, won a tag man. team match. Dolph should not start. This is not what he needs to do, man. He does not want this. He, he should see what happens to Carmella on the weekend. He does not want this. Uh, Mysterio. Oh, no. Mysterio not happy with uh, Jimmy Uso. I hope Roman Reigns' opinion is Mysterio should shut his mouth. <laughs> uh, no, Roman Reigns, I think you got to book this Garza and Reigns match. Yeah, I do too, but unfortunately, what I do at the pay-per-view could change yeah. the chances of that dramatically, so yeah. we'll see, I guess, right? You missed your opportunity. You should have just booked it on this last <laughs> I show. I did. But... I really did, yeah. All right, everybody. Uh, oh, let's let's uh, click forward one more day here before we end it, before the, the big pay-per-view. Indeed. Big show, man. Big, big-time show. Doesn't get any bigger, I would say, Jeremy. It doesn't get any bigger than Judgment Day, right? It does not. It does not at all. Blockbuster program. Are you excited for this point of view, Jeremy? Be honest with me. Be honest with me. You're excited, Look, right? I like, I like your uh, Drew and Roman build. I mean, I know at some point Roman's turning heel, but that, that makes me more excited. So, Because I'm all for heel Roman Reigns. I think that he's much better in that role. Um, okay. Kevin Owens and Rick Rude, I'm... Fat shaming, that's fine with me. Um, it's a little bit mean, but you know, sometimes you got to be yeah. mean in wrestling. That's all right. True. Uh, Becky went, you didn't have AJ on, on your go home show. That was a little, you know, that was a call. Training camp. That she was, was in training okay, camp. Okay, okay. That was a call. That, that training camp stuff works for her husband. So that, that was certainly a call there. <laughs> um, your tag team, your women's tag team title match. It, you haven't done anything for that. I'm sorry. Um, yes. Your your tag team title match. I am looking forward to the Usos against Proud and Powerful. That's a strong match. Very strong match. So, yeah, you, you've got some good stuff on the show. And your, uh, the, your tournament, your one-night four-person tournament where you're going to have to make Randy Orton very unhappy. I'm, I'm v- super interested in how he's going to react to all that. Yes, all, all of that was true. Every bit of it was true. Um, Jim Ross has retired and Jimmy Dream has got married. I don't know which one of them is more important to you, but they're both on the board. So oh, is poor. he, okay, is he like out of the business? What are we doing, JR? Yeah, so he's he's not with AEW anymore. He's unemployed. He's de- gone. Jim Ross has wow. got tired. He got tired of listening or reading all of your tweets and telling him that he's forgetting the names of people, the moves of people, and he's like, you know what? I'm just going to – I'm not going to listen to this criticism anymore. I'm going to sit at home. I'm still going to be on Twitter. I'm going to post the, the cowboy uh, emojis, uh, and all these women <laughs> who post their pictures, and that's what I'm going to do with my life, and I'm going to be happy doing that. I'm not going to listen to this criticism anymore. Good for you, Jim Ross. Yeah, he's had enough of seeing Jake Hager squandered on these shows, <laughs> yeah. right? Ted DiBiase Sr., I guess he's just out of the business, too. He's got, yep. yeah, he sold his house and everything. Uh, he's, he's involved in a embezzling scheme, I think, something like that. Well, good for Ted, then, in that case. <laughs> I mean, maybe yeah, he needs to stay in the bad. business, get some money. Yeah, yeah, probably a good call. All right, uh, what's the emails here? A bunch of people just mad at being in developmental, look at over it. Big Japan, still the head booker position is available. I, I don't that... want the pencil. I really don't. What's that? I don't want the pencil of Big Japan. I just want to own the place. <laughs> yeah. Well, we should have we should have applied for the ownership role. I don't know what would have happened, uh, but we should have applied for it. Yeah, no idea. All right, everybody. That is going to uh, wrap up this show. Next episode, big show. Joseph is booking Judgment Day. Joseph, do you have the card in front of you? Can you run down the card? I know I kind of did some of it, but run down the full card. The big dog, Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre. I will not tell you the finish of that match, even though my notes has the finish in brackets. I almost read it out. That would have been a terrible shame for our program. <laughs> Becky Lynch, JJ Lee, Bliss Cross, Abel Sorks versus the team I don't have a name of, Ember Moon and Liv Morgan. <laughs> Rick Rude, Kevin Owens in a uh, social commentary match. Carmella and Naomi. Uh, I will not read the results of the tournament. The US <laughs> tournament. And... Usos. Stacked, Jeremy. Stacked. That is a great show. Everybody tune in next week. 
for Judgment Day, and we will talk to you then.